interacting with you guys as soon as it's finished. Okay, so this is going to be the next installment in our first 10 series. Let me quickly go into AFK, which I have done. This is going to be Boki from Austria versus the Bizzle. Now, uh, two very, very decent European players. You could definitely say that about Boki also, considering Boki was a ESL Pro League MKX Season 3 finalist. As and well as an impressive placement at EVO this year as well. Boki's had a really, really good year, and Lau has... He seems to be in a really good spot right now, and obviously the Bizzle, being a long-time Sector player, played Jackie Briggs through most of MKX's life, but looks like he is settling down on Sector for now, or at least for this set. I'm sure he's been playing a bunch, so let's just get into this. So we're going to see some more Kung Lao action. Buzzsaw, definitely sort of one of the more favoured variations by Kung Lao players. Buzzsaw just getting that more reliable meterless damage, but still retaining a decent neutral, and the element of mix from the low hat, and the unchanged grab mix-up. Now, I can imagine Boki's buzzsaw being a nightmare to deal with now, because Boki was always very aggressive, very kind of in your face, um, very much plays Kung Lao the way Storm plays uh, Shirari Utakedo, right? Like, very unorthodox, but still works, very crazy, and buzzsaw is just more dangerous now, but does get a full combo off the low hat. There's a, a general saying, Boki does what Boki wants, and, and I invented that just now. But Boki is currently winning, though. Oh, he's going to get tagged by a really brave teleport there from Bizzle. Did have two bars, so it wasn't a massive risk. He's going to get that challenge, but an instant air dive kick attempting to punish. He's not going to get it, but he's going to get that grab, which is everything he needs right now. Bizzle, though, sitting on three bars. And I actually really like that read from Boki, going, you know what? The Bizzle's almost dead. I don't think he's actually going to spend a bar to try and win that round, now, because it's so bleak. Buzzsaw Sector is a weird matchup, because Kung Lao universally deals with any up missile and block with instant dive kick. What? It, it's a clean full combo punish every time. However, oh no, um, does manage to neutral crouch the 4-4-3, but doesn't get a full combo for it. But it does show a little bit of knowledge there. Boki is aware that he can neutral crouch that 4-4-3. Oh no, here he goes. There's the low hat good blocking there. I'm not sure if Bizzle was fuzzying that or whether he just generally got good blocks. However, his blocking on the back two and the low hat has been superb, so it makes me think that there is an element of fuzzying here. Yeah, Boki's playing really clean right now. He's just looking really solid overall. Bizzle's sitting on all that bar, but currently doesn't really have anything to do with it. Is he going to spend a bar to get more damage? No, Boki's going to break straight away. Neutral crouch is under the rocket. Boki is just playing with no fear right now. Bizzle, he's being very, um, sort of preservative on his meter, sitting on three bars. Again, checking the forward four, even after Boki prepared to neutral crouch. That's quite brave there, especially when he's as weak as he is. He's going for staggers. Oh, and he went, spending a bar, trying to go for 50-50. He's going to block it. Here we go. Guaranteed jailing, and that's going to be it. And actually, I do believe the low hat connecting um, may have even actually been what sealed that, because that was a four-hit combo at the end. I actually really liked Boki's patience at the end there. Bizzle kept putting him in situations where he was taking the plus two after plus two, but Boki just... He, w he wasn't biting, you know, he wasn't going for the pokes, he just wanted to wait for Bizzle to do something that wasn't plus, and he got it in the end. I would like to say immediately as well, after this first game, a humongous thanks to both Boki and the Bizzle. Um, we did have an unfortunate run-in where our two players that we had to come in and play both no-showed before our Twitch went live, which is very unfortunate. Boki and Bizzle both stepped up to the plate and were pre prepared to play. This was a very last-minute thing for them to both be involved. They were not able to prepare for one another, and I want to say thank you very much to the two of them for actually doing this and leaving us with we probably should have said that at the start but at least I, I, forgot. Early days. <laughs> I forgot to mention it either way Boki the first hit is going to go to Bizzle that, now that's one of the elements I think Sector can do now with Flame Burner being safer on block is that situations where the Kung Lao was going to let go of block to try and punish up missiles you can Flame Burner instead knowing they're letting go of block if it connects you just get that extra hit right now, Boki's actually playing a lot slower than we are used to seeing him play. He gets very, very smart all around. Gets the plus frames, nice block from the Bizzle, but Boki's sitting on loads of bar. Oh, isn't going for the punish. I do wonder what's going on there, because Boki's going to get the low hat, but he didn't get any normal before it, which leads me to believe either he's not trying to punish, or he's just trying to kind of enforce some kind of low hat thing instead, which I'm not really sure I agree with, but... He's sitting on three bars a meter near the corner, Bizzle or nothing. If Boki gets one single hit, he's going to try and punish up missiles, go straight in. Only one of the missiles is going to track. He can totally still win this round. Oh, the meter burn flame burner is going to work for Bizzle. Still back to the corner, doesn't have a single bar. Boki got a full stick to work with, but at the same time, like Sector really, he, he's, he's still dangerous even without the meter. And there's that, that the sort of almost like automatic counter poke with the low hat off the normal. Bizzle's just repeatedly getting tagged with it. He's going to get tagged by the raw back too, but the low hat means he is going to be relatively safer. He's not going to get by the full combo. Speaking of which though, Boki confirms into the double hit. He's going to get a nice amount of damage there. 30% meter listen to knockdown. Still sitting on three bars. A very decent situation to be in, especially as Buzzsaw near the corner. 
Wow, Boki's making himself really slippery to confirm into on the ground here. Oh, gets the dive kick as well. Nice stuff, Boki, with a clean, Ooh. clean combo to finish things off. Two forward and ones, poking him. Still has three bars of meter. Boki is actually being really reserved with this right now. You know, it's actually really interesting watching Boki play without meter burn spin. That meter burn spin was so staple to how Boki wanted to approach this character. But he's kind of had to slow down what he wants to do. He's not been able to be as kind of YOLO with Kung Lao uh, without the ability to use that spin as often as he could. But he is going to get tagged by the three of that forward one string. That was a nice hit confirm from uh, Bizzle. Even though we went in for the uh, the dash afterwards, but still at the same time gets a nice teleport. Good read from Bizzle. And nice confirm as well. Goes for the bar, catches in a little bit more damage and opts to send him full screen. I don't think he wants anywhere near him. The meter burn rocket is going to connect, but oh, Dive Ooh, King wow. Boki is on point with these right now. He's going to get another knockdown. He's going to go for the spin. Just try and get the Oki. Speaking of which, he's going to get one grab. He can totally win on this. Is the Bizzle going to use a wake up? He isn't. Oh, oh he's oh my God. Bars, but he has the breaker. That's two bars for two. And there's a teleport. Bizzle gets a full jump in. Doesn't block the low hat. Staggers it. And that is going to be a clean game too. That was a really good exchange. That was a biz That was a Boki teleport. That What we would normally see Boki do with a spin, he did with a teleport instead. That was so smart. And do you know why he did that? Because uh, that gets two respects from me. He really did that meter burn teleport because he expected a wake up flame burner and he anticipated on being disappeared from the screen by the time the active frames of the flame burner were coming out. He planned on making it with entirely and going straight through. Unfortunately, it didn't matter at all. No, I'm actually but very, very happy with what we're seeing so far. I haven't seen either of these guys play in so long, and I understand this isn't super duper tournament mode. This isn't the most serious thing on the planet. But at the same time, you know, no one wants to lose at burst of ten, and I've not seen these guys play in so long. I had no idea what to expect, but we're actually getting some really, really good games. And I'm a big fan of that. Here we go, so Boki's gonna have two games on there. Bizzle, once again, is gonna secure that first hit bonus. And that was a really tasty little hit confirm. I think Boki being a little bit antsy. I like that use of the forward one as well. Just getting that extra hit in the forward one just to get that tiny bit more damage on the table. Oh wow, Boki's gonna get tagged. Oh my god, the PND! <laughs> Oh my word, the PND lives on purposefully neutral. Now, I actually wonder if Boki wanted to meet about that. Um the upward hat toss there. because so obviously you can make, you know, it's, it's an overhead when it comes back down, you can get some, you know, good pressure off it, but he just threw it normally. And oh, that was wow. really nice from Boki. That's gonna get him some very respectable damage. Drops the ender, and oh, that is no. actually gonna cost him the round completely, and Bizzle is gonna take that one, steal it right from under his hand. No, I was about to say, before I even said that, I think I jinxed the situation, um, when you can see that, he, he better all right there, but his, his read on when to use meter and teleport so far have actually been uh, impeccable. They've been bang on the money. Oh wow, this is a win! What? Uh, that was one of the issues that Sector's teleport punch has, and that has some severe hitbox issues against people that just so happen to move forward as the teleport comes across the other side. Kung Lao's low hat moved Kung Lao slightly forward, which caused the teleport to whiff, and it's an extremely common problem that Sector has. Tell Boki tries to get a little bit of a shimmy there to catch him, but Bizzle is going to tag him anyway. This is a really strong round for Boki, he's just playing super good. That was a nice little whiff punish though, the back dash, he's going to whiff punish it with a forward 1-3, going in for missiles, dedicates into the back one, was not ready for those missiles to connect, so it might actually come back to haunt him. Instant air dash. At this point, I don't think that was a huge issue, because the fact is, Bizzle was now out of the corner. You know, although Boki's sitting on three bars, Bizzle almost has two and he's not going to be in that dangerous territory that you don't really want to be in versus Lao. Wow! That was a really nice buffer. Back to no, teleport. I actually think that was a buffer from Bizzle. He just went into the teleport. I don't think that was going to connect unless it hits. That was really good stuff from him. He's going to zone, play that scary game again, trying to go in for the back one. That's two different times in this game. He's gone in for up the stars oh, wow. and hasn't been prepared for them to connect. He's just dedicated into the back one anyway. Oh, oh no! The close rocket. Loki doesn't get it this time. Bizzle's spending a lot of bar on these rockets, but look at the damage. It's completely working. I think he's pretty much got just everything off um, off just being able to, to catch That delayed grab. Can Boki make this comeback? He has like a 95% health deficit. I don't think he's going to do it now. Meet him on Flame Burner. Hits two times. I mean, there's in two hits of armor. I mean, he was chipped damage territory. I really don't think there was a lot he could have done in that situation. Well, I mean, th that, that's kind of an issue with just the nature of, of how the, the hitbox of the Meteor Burn Flame works. Um, I do think that... Unless he did something that maybe would have caused it to, um, that maybe would have caused it to whiff almost, um, we we wouldn't have seen him but survive. Sex all back to the corner, neutral jumping. It's kind of hard in that situation. Can be reacted to. It was kind of like. <laughs> was there anything Boki could have done? I'd close to not die in that situation. He was like a ninety-nine percent dead guarantee. But again, you know, good, good, good. You know, props to Bizzle for recognizing that situation, right? Knowing that's going to work there and. He took the game. First game to him, though. If he can take this next one, he's going to tie it up. But 
Currently still down on games. Now, Boki is actually playing cleaner the longer this goes on, but at the same time, Bizzle is figuring out a few things himself. He's definitely getting away with a lot more meter burn-up rockets now. Um, now we obviously see um, Boki's been trying to go for those. Actually, you think he was quite hesitant to punish that forward three, and that was a nice whip punish from Bizzle. I think Bizzle was getting a lot of mileage out of being able to backdash and, and then whip punishing uh, with the forward one three. That's definitely not the first time we've seen that. And uh, he's going to try and catch a nice use of the low hat right there. Um, committing into the teleport. Oh no, that's a bad Oh no, oh, no punish! Do you reckon um, Boki was actually prepared for that to go the other way? I have no idea. I mean, again, you'd do the standing string anyway, though, from that situation. You'd kind of, you know, you'd react to that. But still, look, he is managing to chip this round away. Not taking huge chunks of combo damage, per se, but still getting something for it. I think if Bizzle did an air dash into the up hat, that would have been sick. I think that's actually why Boki went for that right there. He has him near the corner, though. Bizzle's going to be doing some pressure. 1-1-4, one, one, though there's a gap. There really isn't much Oh, can't punish do. that. Doesn't go for it. Oh, teleport's a bit late. Is that going to be the round? Yeah, there we go. Now, one thing that I like Bizzle's doing, um, we see Triborg a lot now really making the most of 1-1-4. One, one, so he's actually starting to stagger off 1-1 one, because one, you're waiting for that 4. You're not going to armor the gap as Kung Lao because you can't really get much off of it. But that's kind of the thing, right? Although Triborg University, there's a gap in 1-1-4. One, one, so 1-1 one, one by itself is going to become something you can stagger because the 4 is so good because especially Sector <laughs> what could was turn that? into teleport just like that. He could turn 1-1-4 one, one, into big damage, so you have to respect the option. Oh, oh good read. wow! And, 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 and doing it from the fullest of full screen into close missile meant that Bizzle knew Boki was going to go for it. But speaking of which, he knows that um, Boki's going to go for the uh, low hat right there, catching the teleport. Almost could have actually got the forward one to uh, forward two one backdash string into teleport right there. I think that's actually why Bizzle goes for the forward one because the longer they're in the air, you have that split second longer to actually build your stamina back up to do the forward two one backdash. Now, Boki's spending so much of this set looking for things to react to with Dive Kick. He's getting hit by loads of teleports in the neutral. I think Bizzle's adjusted that Boki's obviously not going to be holding block because he's looking for that Dive Kick. So he's getting away with these teleports. The entire last round was just teleports. Ooh. Speaking of which, he's going to get away. Waster bar completely. No stamina to break this either. That's going to be full damage, but Bizzle doesn't make the most of it. Oh, oh our nice read there from Boki. He was confident that Bizzle was going to try and save the bar. had confidence so many times. The overhead into the low. The meter burn teleport. And that's actually probably going to be it, right? The meat of Antel <laughs> oh, grabs you all it does. Wow, okay. Boki showing some respect doesn't go into the brutality for once. We don't see Kung Lao finish on the throw and go for it. The respect from Boki, though, to keep that going. That's going to be three games to one. Now, now I, wa I wonder if the end of that round was Bizzle just expecting Boki to finish a lot of those strings and combos, and he basically just cut them all short. Because it was kind of like chunks into chunks into chunks. You could tell Bizzle was waiting to see something hefty, and Boki just never gave it to him. Yeah, I think that that's one of the things that's going on. Um, I think the Bizzle, the game that he won, um, he was definitely playing much more of a defensive game. The up missiles were coming across really amazingly well. Homing missiles were putting in mad work, but as Sector, the homing missiles are only going to really be super apparent um, when the health bars are going low. You know, when it's time to start worrying a bit about, oh damn, I can't really sit there and take this because the homing missile is going to cause me a lot of grief. Um, but I think Boki in general was just, he's just being extremely aggressive and, and he is not afraid to get in there and start enforcing what he can. So at Next Level Game, subscribing for 18 months in a row. I do believe one of our longest standing subscribers on Twitch. So thank you very much, man. We do appreciate your support. Absolutely good stuff right there. Boki has Bizzle in the corner. And again, this is going to be that kind of staple Kung Lao pressure we're going to see in the corner. There comes the overhead. Another low. Is he going to try and condition for the double? He is indeed going to do that and catch two overheads into a full combo. Now, this is what he needs, right? He needs those straight rockets. But the question is, can Dive Kick punish straight rockets as well? Oh, isn't letting go of block again. Bizzle's agony of throwing himself away twice, but Boki's not, let, not actually adjusting the right way to it. Wow, Boki, very dominant round one. Now, one thing that we're not seeing the Bizzle do is some of the sort of the newer post-patch stuff the Sector has. Um, turning things into Flame Burner on anticipation of those other missiles. We're not seeing that anymore. We're also not seeing things like 212 into Straight Missile, Back 2 Straight Missile. These things are now much more safe on block, but Boki with relentless corner pressure. A nice check of the forward one to push himself out. Bizzle is now out of the corner for the instant air dive kick. That's a fantastic trade for Boki to just keep Bizzle in that situation. Oh, oh nice that reaction teleport. That's, that's the teleport of someone that's been playing Sector for years. And as we can say, here comes the zoning. Now, one thing, Bizzle is actually very rarely ready for those missiles to come out and to connect against Boki when he's moving. He's actually not going for these instant air teleports to catch uh -oh. an airborne opponent. Doesn't oh, no! The hat's still not on his head because it whiffed completely, but still Bizzle is stuck in a bad situation. Now, basically, that entire round came down to Bizzle just not getting enough 
for the meter he was spending, right? He spent three of them very, very quickly on meter burn rockets. Two of them connected. Well, that's two opportunities for full combos. And then at the end there, unfortunately, just blew on a little bit too early. I think that's kind of just meter management generally needs to be a little bit better. Raven8080, thank you very much for the nine-month resub, dude. We appreciate your support. Thank you very much. Hopefully you are enjoying this set, which is currently four to one. Now, we do wonder, is the Bizzle actually going to change characters at any point? Or I, I think there's just some adaptations to be made. I can't imagine so. I mean, like, like we have said before, this isn't like a super duper, <laughs> like serious tryhard set. I can't imagine there's any real reason to change characters unless you're just, you know, you really, really want to win but no that said it's not that bizzle can't take games he's clearly doing fine i think one of his biggest problems is that he's not capitalizing enough when he gets that hit you know he gets those you get those opportunities to take big damage um and he's just not really taking them he's cutting his combos early to try and you know uh feign him into an up up rocket setup that he's not going to tech roll from and unfortunately boki's just not really falling for them and bizzle is just not really getting enough damage here comes some sets wow oh it bounces off the floor doesn't quite get the dive kick but i think actually the knockdown frames of that neutral jump kick is going to be more than sufficient here we go has him near the corner bizzle has taken Taking so much damage so far and getting the first hit is going to give him three bars of meter. Boki not really looking like he needs meter at this point in time. Has him in the corner. Relentless rush down back to into low. That's what the mix-up of Buzzsaw is currently all about. Round one to Boki. Now this is quite scary because Buzzsaw like... Think back to season one where we saw Foxy do Buzzsaw Kung Lao you know, week after week every week before Tempest got you know the initial big changes it received. We saw this every week. Oh, now that's when you know that Bizzle is confident the bogey's going to put on some respect on that teleport. Unfortunately, Bizzle does drop his combo, so he's not going to be able to capitalize as much as he probably would have liked to. So we saw this Buzzsaw corner game only with like half the damage he's getting now, right? It was really, really, really significant how how many times he had to hurt you then compared to now. And when you've got someone like Bogey who's been playing Buzzsaw this oh, entire time... Oh, hang on a minute! Bogey's still alive! Is he going to try and spend a bar? He is going to do that. That was very dangerous that Bizzle opted to not spend a bar and let him live with that shred of health. However... He's gonna be still alive here. I mean, if you've got like one percent or less health, like that, that, that is Sector's win condition. He doesn't need to get rid of one hundred percent of health. He needs to get rid of ninety-nine percent because he's got meter burn rocket. He's got a tracking teleport. He's got armored flame burner with its crazy hitbox and th you know three hits to it. Sector has more ways than I think almost any character in the game to secure that final percent. Oh, I think so it's that's, so hard to that's make That's definitely that probably one of Sector's greatest strengths. However, oh, oh the he's... quick use of Mia Burn teleport to go straight through Mia Burn missile. That was an amazing trade there for Boki. Boki's going to spend another bar baiting the teleport. The hat's going to go the completely wrong way. And Bizzle is still alive, but only just. Oh, hang on a minute. Wow. Boki opted to sit there until his stamina came back, but oh no. <gasps> Oh no, just go for the dash! Oh my word, Bizzle had the bar! I think he wanted to keep it for breaker potential, but health was so low, just became so much more dangerous. Boki looking really good today. Well, I mean, let's not forget, right? I mean, it's... I, I don't, I, actually, I don't mean, mean for this to sound remotely disrespectful, but... Um, it's almost easy to forget that... Um, because it was so, so long ago that... Boki was a Season 3 finalist on the EU side. You know? Like, this guy was at... The world finals for the MKX Pro League, and he he gave us a great display of what he was capable of. The one thing was, Boki was known as a Kung Lao player and still is to this day, hence the buzzsaw pick. But he used to cater at the finals, you know, which might have contributed towards his, I guess, underwhelming performance there. Uh, we really wanted to see this guy's Kung Lao, but then he played Lao at Evo exactly and very well. You know, he won his pool from the winner side. Defeated Peanut as I well. Guess you Boki took out Peanut. I guess you wouldn't side. win your pool if you came out of the loser side, right? Yeah. <laughs> but no, again, already has this corner pressure. Now, this is like pre-patch buzzsaw corner pressure with post-patch post -patch buzzsaw damage. Oh, and there's yes. the full yeah. punish. Let's him land. Doesn't get him airborne. That was a perfectly timed punish from Boki. And Bizzle just... He just doesn't really have the answers right now. He's spending so much bar and Boki is just completely in control. I almost feel like some of these things like forward one, three on block into teleport, like, I don't think that kind of thing's gonna catch Boki anymore. It was catching him a couple of times at the start of the set, but with these first 10 style series, I mean, it's, you can adapt to these things incredibly quickly. He's gonna catch the back two, two, here we go, big damage. He's gonna knock him straight down, tries to go for a restand, but you just can't armor break like you used to. Not with the meter burn flame burner having two hits of armor. Oh, wow, well, forward three makes the dive kick whiff in the wrong direction, keeps Bizzle safe. That hard knockdown does make projectile trades fantastic for Sector, but he goes for the wrong up missiles, trying to go for the close one. Unfortunately, tracking Boki, who is already in the middle of a dive kick. Oh, wow. wow! Just gets hit by Raw down two. This is not Bizzle's match. 
He gets the raw jump in, but we haven't seen many of the lows. And again, the low poke into low hat. I think Bizzle was kind of almost waiting for his turn to press a button. And Boki is throwing these low hats so sporadically. He's just showing Bizzle, it is never your turn to poke. If I'm doing a button and I think you're going to press a down one or something, bam, I'm going to go straight in for that low hat. I don't think we've... I, <laughs> I kind of forgot that Buzzsaw cancels a lot into low hat until we kind of see someone like Boki who really makes the most of that, really. Because I, I know Foxy's style of Lao is very reserved, very, you know, very patient. And Boki's kind of like on the opposite end of the spectrum, but they both work in their own way. You know, clearly Boki has something going on here where he's just always thinking one step ahead. He's always thinking, you're going to press a button here, this is going to connect, and then I'm doing it. Like you said, Boki just really wants to keep it his turn all the time. Oh, he's not going to go for an anti-air. That raw jump, unfortunately, though, Boki once again is going to secure that first hit bonus. Bizzle is again on the back foot. He really is having a very hard time dealing with when he thinks the low is going to come out. He's going to block the forward one three. Almost very fortunate that Bizzle has him near. Here we go. That's sort of mid screen. Oh, wow, nice. covers in time. Bizzle keeps safe. Doesn't go for the teleport. Pretty sure he could have got it off there, but I think he just wanted to keep himself safe. Throws his way another bar. Has the life lead, though. Can he keep hold of it? Because right now, he just keeps getting stolen away from him. Gets tagged by the overhead. Is he going to get the dive kick? Yes, he is. The full confirm into new big 20. Well, not big damage, but 25% is more than you need to bring himself back in. Is it going to break, though? He's going to concede the round. That's a really nice hit confirm right there, seeing those up missiles catch. And the Bizzle is going to put a round on the table. Having Boki near the corner, and again, Kung Lao without that meat band spin. Nice down to Atia. If he can just keep Boki in this situation, it's going to be great for him. He's going to go for it. Goes for the grab. He does not want Boki to break. More importantly, because he does not want to be broke in the corner against Lao. Very smart decision. You can see Bizzle trying to enforce some more of the grabs. I think he just wants to, de to deter Boki from waking up with buttons. Oh, and he finally, the first time he doesn't actually confirm its teleport, Boki does find himself getting hit by the forward 1-3. That's really unfortunate for Bizzle, I think. Oh no, here we go. Boki is going to be trying to pull this one back. And again, we're seeing him be so conservative with his meter. And he's got three bars to work with. He might try and punish the forward three. Doesn't get it, but three bars still might be enough to win this round. Spends two. Bizzle doesn't have the option to break. This is going to be very, very painful damage. 40% just like that can bring Boki back into this one. Oh, catches him. Calls the bluff. Gets the jump over. And manages to bring him corner to corner. I definitely think that was Bizzle's round to lose. Uh, for sure. The problem is he now finds himself in the corner again. Low hat, he gets tagged by the double back two. Boki doesn't confirm into straight hat. At this point, it does not matter though because he has him so little health in the corner just chipping away on block and hit. You just can't. But just look at the amount of meter Boki is building. Confirms the instant dive kick. Just so oh, much bar no, on Boki full gets combo. another. There we go. How much damage is this going to do? He's going to spend another one. What, what is this? Are we going to have a cheeky style? Ooh, Fantastic block. Part of block. But I think it's going to be too little, too late for Bizzle, who's going to lose another game after that incredible sequence from Boki. I think that was uh, that was a very pre-patch MKX way to finish that round. Block the hard to blockable, but still lose. Well, I think, you know what? That was an absolutely amazing block. The issue is, Bizzle at that point had lost so much health. There really was there was not much he could do. It was actually the perfect time for Boki to go for a setup like that, right? Because there was just so little he could do. Like you said, just chip territory, hard knockdown. Boki had the bar, he's got the mobility, like, why not? And Bizzle blocked it, but unfortunately still died. So here we go. This is going to be uh, the main, the main chicken, as you could say, for the Bizzle. Oh, God, gonna that's be... going back a while. That's a meme that time forgot, that one. Right, oh, so my word. Bizzle is uh, going back to his original main. I think Sector is his favorite character. Um, but the Bizzle has, in this game, always been a Jackie player. Since day one, this guy's used full auto. However, and even with Combat Pack 2, when it first came out, this guy actually stuck with Jackie. So, I think you could safely say this is the character that Bizzle has He's definitely has had more experience. time, he's definitely had more time with Jackie, but like I said, we haven't seen Bizzle play in a long time, so we don't actually know what character he's been favouring as of late. So I guess we'll see. If he starts doing, you know, phenomenally well with Jackie in comparison, then clearly he's more comfortable with this. Unfortunately, he's gonna whiff the uh, machine guns, but hopefully there's just that familiarity. Because I can imagine, like, if you're a European player and you've played since launch, you you will have fought plenty of the uh, Kung Lao players. Now, we right? mustn't you forget gonna be ready for that. one of the elements here is that Boki has had... Oh, nice use of Mutaban Teleport being so quick. Spending a second just to get damaged 40%. You really can't shake a stick at that. Um, I was about to say, Boki has actually had eight games to get comfortable in the set. So with Bizzle, although he may be more comfortable with Jackie, the issue he's going to have now is that Boki has, is so comfortable with the set that's currently taking place. Bizzle is now going to have to adapt to using a new character in this scenario, which does put him at a disadvantage. 
Well, especially if you're, like I said, like it's it, it's just the way it's 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 balanced against you. If if you haven't had eight games to get ready and your opponent has, then it is going to be difficult. But right now, Bizzle has got a little bit of corner pressure. Block on the low, catches him. Is that going to be a full confirm? Yes, it is, of course. Standard B and B for Bizzle. A nice thirty percent, nice reset. But gets the bar out of him. So long as he wastes the bar on the wake up and he doesn't actually hit you, it's not too bad. The problem is Bizzle's lost the corner game, but uh, he still has the life lead, and that is the most important thing. Oh wow, he's still going to get the uh, dive kick confirmed. Speaking of which, though, Bizzle is going to tag him. Oh, what <laughs> okay, was and he confirms on it. Okay, Bizzle uh, showing us uh, a few new things. Interesting. That was an interesting little poke right there. Bizzle's going to take. If that's what you'd call it. On the slow moving hat, wastes the bar. That is super unfortunate. Bizzle um, I can't. I actually try. I think he tried to absorb the low hat. I don't know if he actually can. But no, he tried to absorb uh, the meter burn straight. But for some reason, it didn't work. I, I don't know why that didn't happen. Interesting. Oh, dive kick whiffs. It just looks so hard for Bizzle to set anything up, you know, he's, he's trying to control the space, he's trying to just get some breathing room, but Boki just isn't letting him have it. I think Boki's definitely the kind of player that's going to play more come X at 1000 miles an hour, and if you just can't keep up, it's going to be tricky for you. Uh, speaking of which, I mean, Boki as well, he's just making himself so slippery. Oh, oh wow, it. good reflect! Yeah. Actually comboed him as well, that was sweet. Oh no, the raw dive kick, but Boki had the bar to break, so he is able to take those kind of risks. Oh, just oh, wow. about to say! Boki had almost three bars, and the second he built it, he used the X-Ray. I'm surprised we've seen nine games in total, and that was the first Kung Lao X-Ray we've seen. I guess that, but to be fair, I think Boki's just doing a good job of using it. You just go for the meat burn, low hats, straight hats, he's kind of using it really well. And obviously the teleports as well, especially if he spends both bars for the big 40%. This is definitely looking incredibly difficult right now for Bizzle though. Um, I mean, you can tell that he's changed characters, I don't think he's comfortable with Sector in this setting. Um, but it could Boki, be the matchup, maybe he's played Boki a bunch before and he just doesn't specifically like fighting Boki with it. There could be multiple reasons. Well, like we said earlier on guys, um, this wasn't the initial set we had planned, so these guys didn't actually have too much time to warm up before this, so please do keep that in mind. Uh, these guys did us a big favour by coming in to give us this set instead, so we were able to still broadcast something this week. And it's actually been a really good set so far, so I'm really happy with that. Hopefully you guys are too, and again, thanks to both Boki and Bizzle for uh, coming in and, and saving our asses. Yeah, I think that's definitely safe to say. I think Boki as well, I'm actually really happy uh, with, with the quality of this Lao, especially post-patch. Um, I think Boki was definitely known as being a player that, that was... He rinsed that meter burn spin, you know, if he, if he felt like it was going to work, he would go for it. Um, but he doesn't, good he doesn't see, have that he still, he still fundamentally understands Lao without the meter burn spin, and that is really refreshing to see, because he did kind of have this... You know, he had a good reputation, because clearly he was a very successful player in the Pro League, but it was kind of like, you know, Boki's crazy, he's unsafe, he does a lot of armor, you know, here and there, but he's still playing very, very well without the spin. And that's a sign of a good player that has truly understood this character. I think Bezel, was, he, just, he just has to get a game on the cards if he wants to have an, even a remote hope of pulling this one back. Oh no, the Meat Band Teleport, good use of uh, Boki. And he's going to try and punish him, but unfortunately it's not going to work out. Another Meat Band Teleport, the forward one is going to make it with, but at this point he's going to armor straight through that with an X-Ray. Is that going to kill? Yeah, that's death. He's definitely dead. Definitely dead. Really good use of the X-Ray there from Bizzle, I think. Brilliant. No, brilliant. Nice reaction. And he's got all this time to build the bar back up, but he's full auto, he's not going to struggle to build it. Oh, oh no, my god! god. Wow, that was a brave dive kick from Moki. I only bagged him 20% though, that could have been a lot better. Well, a lot worse for Bizzle, I should say. I mean, Boki got the corner to it, he got some good, you know, life lead. And he has the corner again. He's going to get that, he, he, he scouts out that immediate wake up. And he's going to tag him with the grab as well, checking him with the low hat. And again, good use there. Bizzle waiting for his turn to press the button, actually waiting for the low hat this time. But again, he's lost so much health. I'm not sure what his chances are of pulling this round back. Uh, good reaction to there of Boki catching him in the sure, air. Sure, he could have finished off there. Maybe, I mean, he's got full health. Maybe Boki just miscalculated. Maybe he thought the down two was going to work. Yeah, maybe. Could have been. Or going to win, I should say, because it obviously worked. <laughs> Things are looking quite dangerous for, for Bizzle right now, though. I mean, Boki's sitting on eight games. He's been tagged again. Bizzle's going to save the bar. To be fair, this is going to be Jackie Briggs. If she catches him in the corner, it's going to be a great situation for her. You know, mix-up city, big damage. But unfortunately, not really in the situation to apply any of it. He's going to tag it, though. Doesn't quite get the upshot. That's going to be massively costly. Good block there from Boki. Speaking of which, he's going to get tagged by the overhead. Bizzle trying to get something on the cards. Boki with an amazing read on the teleport, putting Bizzle straight back into the corner. Tries to lay it, wakes up with a down one, realizes Boki's with the string and tries to get something on the wake up. Bizzle down on life, but has the x-ray again. 
He is two low hats away from being in danger territory. And oh, there we go. One more hit's going to do it. Uh -oh. This is going to be so hard to survive. The crucial parry. Is he going to stay alive? He's going to get the overhead. Oh, no. The instant dive kick. That would have been an absolutely sick comeback. <laughs> it was another one of those situations where you've got like magic pixel to come back on. He made the read. He got the sick reflect, but... I mean, Bizzle did what he needs to. He took the overhead, he took the 50-50, but Bizzle, like, Boki just finds that that magic moment to get that quick dive kick in. Because that's all he needs. It doesn't matter if it, you know, didn't hit. He just needed them to block it. He was not going to be able to block the damage in time. All he needed was just to squeeze out that dive kick. I feel like that's Jackie's little limb syndrome. <laughs> little limb syndrome. Little limb syndrome. Little T-Rex arms, we used to call it back in the day. MK9 Sector summoned from it. Su <laughs> suffered from it. And now Jackie does. It's quite ironic that we're talking about that when the Bizzle has always been a Sector main from the MK9 He days. knows how to pick the characters with tiny arms. Yeah, poor guy. But this is going to be one more game and Boki's going to take this set. Bizzle, I mean, he's going to have to seriously fight back right now. I mean, let's not forget, guys. These guys have nothing to play for. They're just playing for the sake of being in a first to ten right now. So, I mean, like... It's not like Bizzle was going to be like, Right, I must win this right now. However, I don't think anyone wants to get 10 one Nice confirm though, he doesn't get too much damage, but at least keeps the life lead. Nice read in the up rocket, finally manages to bag that. He's been fishing for that ever since he swapped, but just hasn't got the payout like this now. Oh, that oh was nice, that's going to take the round too. Speaking so of payout, a respectable 35% damage. It's quite easy to forget how much damage Full Auto Jackie does, just because we don't see it often enough. Jackie was a very... She became quite a popular character towards the end of the last patch, but these changes have definitely made her fall out of favour with a lot of the higher level players. Well, the issue with Jackie, I think, is that a lot of her plus frames were... They were nerfed. Her, some of her damage, I believe, was toned down a little bit. Um, and it, it was her meatless plus frames that she used to relish in and rely on so heavily as a character. Um, she just doesn't have the same strength of those anymore, which is... It's going to hurt Jackie players, for sure. Oh wow, and that's going to be a clean round for Bogey. Brings himself to set point one round away from taking this first to 10. 10 1. Sits him with some corner pressure behind him. Question is can Bizzle manage to work his way out? Unfortunate read on the up rocket doesn't work at all, and Bogey's going to get a free way in. Rare footage, I was about to say, Bogey not using low hat at the end of a string, but here we go, exploding once again. The neutral crouch to make it with. He's going to miss the 1 1 2 1 2 into spins, but it's going to come out. Good block there from Bizzle trying to punish. Meter burn, here we go. Is it going to oh, come back? Oh, wow, no! Now, very fortunate for Bizzle that he actually doesn't eat a full combo for that. Bogey starved of meter right now, but doesn't stop him doing from a dive kick. Bogey playing with no fear. He has all those games behind him to, to, to work with, and Bizzle desperately needs to keep himself in this. But I think with this health deficit, that was a nice catch. Trying to add the air. Isn't going to get it. Nice whiff punish. How much damage? No stamina to follow up. Heartbreaking. He's going to go in. No combo from Bogey. But at this point, it's looking pretty dangerous. Bogey looking good right now. One more touch might do it. There's the bar. Question is, is he going to use a teleport now, or is he going to save for two? Give it a good block from Bizzle. There's the turn point he needs. Gets tagged with it, but he's still alive. Walks back into it. Meatbun hat is gonna ping pong all over the place. And Boki's gonna take this with a newly buffed up hat. Wow. That was a dominant set. I good mean, finish. Good finish. I think the Boki is an explosive player. This guy plays, I said it earlier, at a thousand miles an hour, you know. Um, he's gonna take this set 10 1. I mean, GG's to these guys. That's gonna. I was about to give him respect, but I, I forgot, so we'll have to forget about that. Oh, brilliant. But um, that's gonna be our first of 10 for this week. Now, I wanna, I wanna sort of recap on what we just saw here. What we saw was Boki playing the game at an insane pace, always being in there, kind of being, do, doing what Boki has always done with Lau, which is be incredibly aggressive, have no fear. If he feels like a dive, an instant dive kick is gonna work, or if he feels like a teleport is gonna work, he'll do it. He's almost sort of switched. Situations where he would go for a really kind of brave attempt at a meat burn spin, he will take that exact same process just somewhere else on screen and will uh, use the meter burn teleport for the same payout. And another thing I noticed as well was Boki was being far more conservative with his meter now than when we saw Boki with Kung Lao pre-patch because he wants not only the meter burn teleport, but the second portion of that for the grab to bag himself 40% damage for the cost of two bars. I actually feel like a lot of that though was Boki... He had a lot of nuances in the matchup that he just knew. There were some things he wasn't doing. Obviously, there was a few things, serious things he wasn't punishing properly, but it wasn't stopping him from winning the matches because he had the crucial knowledge. He might not have had a few punishes on a few special moves here and there, which is a big deal, but he was dive-kicking rockets. He was dive-kicking the up rockets. He was, uh, you know, getting in Sector's face and just not letting him do what Sector can now do very, very well. 
And Boki just had a really good job of just shutting that down. And yeah, at the same time, Bizzle had a really, really, put on a really, really good show. But at the same time, he just, he wasn't getting the damage. He wasn't getting the right payout for the amount of meter he was spending. And Boki was just kind of able to run away with that one. I would definitely agree with that. And I think that was a decent set. We're going to try. Oh, I enjoyed it. I had good fun. And again, thanks to these guys for uh, coming up last minute, very, very last minute, and giving us that set. So huge shout outs to them. Now, let me go quickly talk about how we're going to try and break down these future videos. Hi, guys. We're here. We're oh, just... the camera's on now. Brilliant. Woo. How about that? Um, one thing we want to start doing is we want to make our first 10 series involve you guys more. And this is for both the Twitch and also the YouTube, probably more prominently in the YouTube because it's going to come down to comments. But. We're going to do what we can to set up a North American PlayStation account as well, so we can play both EU and North America. The second we get a North American account sorted and we can play on their netcode servers, then it, it vastly in increases how many people we can have in these sets, and it just gives us a complete blank canvas of who we want, but more importantly, the people that you guys want to see. So, as of, I think tomorrow, the VOD of this first 10 will go online with Boki versus Bizzle. And with it, we highly encourage everyone that watches this video tomorrow to post in the comment section the player that you want to see or the players that you want to see. It could be either one in our next set. The top four players that we see from the comment section, I'll add them up around, I think we could say Monday, around Monday time. I will take the top four most voted in the comment section and make a Twitter poll and allow you guys to vote the players you want to see in the poll play the most. The top two players in that poll, we will do everything we can to reach out to and make this first to 10 happen. And that's going to sort of be our method of how we do it in the future. Um, so long story short, again, basically, when the VOD goes online on Saturday, I don't know what the date will be. I want to say tomorrow in case someone watches this. The video is going to go live. Let us know what players you want to see in the next set. We'll take the most popular ones from the YouTube recommendation. Make a Twitter poll on at PND Mustard and at PND Ketchup. And you guys can vote for which two players. And then we'll try and make that set happen. That's it. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll catch you on the next one.